I want to point out this graphic here. It is irrelevant. Nobody's talking about this, says the people who haven't been listening to those people who had been talking about this. If you are new to the space sector, then I don't blame you for not knowing how we got to this point with NASA's Artemis program. But if you have worked in the space sector for any number of years, then you well know the debates that happen constantly. But don't pretend these conversations have not been happening because they have. And this video is inspired by Dustin at Smarter Every Day. I do think there were significant problems with how how that video portrayed where we got to today. Teeny bit of backstory here, super quick. First, there was the Apollo program. We went there, we beat the Soviet Union to the moon, we planted a flag, we went a few more times, and then we left and we stopped going. Then a few decades later, we get to the first president, George W. Bush, Space Exploration Initiative to go back to the moon. It was canceled. Then there was the second George W. Bush administration, also going back to the moon. It was Constellation program, canceled. And now we have this Artemis program started under the Trump administration, actually started before the Trump administration technically, and renamed Artemis under the Trump administration and continued on in the Biden administration. I want to point out this graphic here. Very clever graphic. Again, credit to Dustin at Smarter Every Day. It is irrelevant. It is completely irrelevant because this is the graphic that matters. It does not matter that Artemis has not happened yet. What matters is what happens after Artemis starts. Before it was called Artemis, it was called Exploration Mission, and it got renamed under the Trump administration with Jim Bredenstein as the NASA administrator. I want to quote Jim in this tweet that I sent out in 2020. The problem with Apollo is that it ended. We want to create a sustainable program. From the start, uh, Artemis was never meant to be Apollo. It was meant to be a sustainable program. So sustainable programs are gonna have different architecture than a program that was meant to simply beat the Soviet Union to the moon. But did you notice something? Did you notice that we are talking about it? How did we get that strange near rectilinear halo orbit? Well, here's an entire white paper from five years ago published by NASA. NASA is having these conversations. NASA is just not creating this stuff out of thin air. These conversations are happening. How did it happen that SpaceX was chosen to have this complex architecture of refueling in orbit before it can go on to the moon and refueling multiple times? Well, it was chosen that way. It was competed against multiple other proposals to land humans on the surface of the moon and return them back to orbit. And in the source selection document written by Kathy Leaders of NASA, she's now at SpaceX, she wrote, quote, I acknowledge the immense complexity and heightened risk associated with a very high number of events necessary to execute the front end of SpaceX's mission. And this complexity is largely translates to an increased risk of operational schedule delays, end quote. So this is being talked about within NASA. This document is a highly legal document that actually went through the scrutiny of a lawsuit and a GAO, that's a Government Accountability Office protest. Not only is NASA discussing these things amongst itself, there's also big community debates. For example, here is this infamous ad that was put out, one of three at the time, by Blue Origin during that lawsuit that I just discussed, where it talks about how the architecture for SpaceX is immensely complex and highly risky. We had a whole social media debate about this. There were t-shirts made. The odd orbit that was chosen, yes, was chosen in part because of Orion. And Orion now is a 20 year old concept. Do you remember a crew exploration vehicle, CAV? It was named Orion. And that concept from the Constellation program under the second Bush administration then translated over to what we have now as Orion. And the requirements kept changing. What if you don't live on social media? Okay, there are other avenues for the community to discuss this. Here is a quote from a Time Magazine article from five years ago. Jim Bridenstine, again, NASA Administrator, quote, this is not about recreating Apollo. People say we have to get to the moon before China or India does. Here's the thing, we already did that. If we go back to the moon, we want to do it with a sustained architecture. That article had multiple quotes from other people who are questioning that architecture. And here's an entire 25 page debate by the community on a public message board. I have been talking about this. Here's a quote from me from last year. I don't know how to explain Artemis 3's launch architecture when it still makes no logical sense to me. Can we keep the goal of returning humans to the moon and scrap the relay race? And here, a few days later, I have an entire thread about the gateway and the pros and cons of the gateway, which I posted here on Twitter X. And then I also posted on LinkedIn and got a lot of discussion going. And if that's not enough for you, NASA has advanced 
advisory panels, for example, the Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel that I know has discussed this particular topic multiple times, as well as other councils, the National Advisory Council. And the thing is that people don't know how the sausage is made, so they're not necessarily paying attention. Not everyone wants to know and not everyone needs to know how all this is happening. This is a compromise. This is a political compromise. It's a financial compromise. It is a technical compromise. It is an international compromise. And a lot of this is by design to be expensive and complex because NASA needs to make this a 50 state program for political reasons. And so when you're thinking about all the ways that we came to this point, which yes, I agree is completely not the best architecture. It's all a compromise and we have been discussing it. Pay attention and join into the conversations. I promise you, you actually can make a difference if you participate in the process.